Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Living Shadow Tarot. How bees ya? Hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing swell. Hope you lift the veil. <gasps> lift the veil up out your life. No longer see the illusion. Sagittarius, we're about to do your dream reading. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Feel the vibe and subscribe. Feel the vibe and subscribe. Feel the vibe and subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Now, if you are new here, I do have another page called Shadow Subliminals in which you can check out. They're for positive um, thinking, reprogramming of your subconscious. A lot of people, um, we don't... Ooh, we got the earthworm. It's the first right here. A lot of people don't... Um, Think about their subconscious is kind of the point a little bit. But um, things that we take in, we take in a lot of things subconsciously. Should I take, okay, yeah, yeah. I said take them off. Take them off. Earthworm and the moth. I like this. Are you Caterpie? Is that what this is? Are we turning into... Caterpie? No. Because I'm thinking about Venomoth. But Venomoth was just... No, Venomoth was Venonat. That's what it was. I was like, but Caterpie wasn't that. Caterpie is um, Butterfree. Ooh, the eagle! Love this eagle spirit. Look at my nails. They match the card. I love it. Okay. And we got the fish. Ooh, the fish. Oh, this is no, this is a good this is a good thing. This is a good thing. This is a good thing. I know when I say fish, even though even if I'm talking about it like I know that's like a thing. Um I, I had to find out that was like a thing in like gay community to like say, like, to say that, and, like, it's, like, a, like, it's a bad thing. I, I don't say it as a bad thing. It's not a bad thing when I'm trying to talk, like, if, like, if I'm talking about the fish, I'm just saying it because it's, like, funny to me. It's, like, blah, 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 blah. I probably watched Finding Nemo too much over here just being Dory. Glub, glub, glub. Glub, 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 glub. Apparently, that's the, oh, um, that's the noise a fish makes is glub. That's what they do. They make glub, 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 glub. <laughs> I don't know why. They just swim back and forth up. But that's what they do too, apparently. <laughs> oh, my God. This is me all day. I just sit here and record a video and make fun of myself, apparently. Um, subscribe to the channel. <laughs> Feel the vibe and subscribe. Feel the vibe and subscribe. Feel the vibe and subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Yes. If I can find this earthworm. Now, if you don't like that I read out the book for this, I don't know what to tell you because I do. The earthworm, shy, hesitant, reluctant to share inner vision. Mm. We all have felt that <laughs> the woes of the earthworm at some point along the way. The earthworm indicates a newbie or a novice working to establish confidence in a new field. Others around you may seem wise and experienced but it's important to remember they once felt earthworm energy too this card is a reminder not to be intimidated or lose hope mastery takes time and you're on the right track besides rumor has it a beginner's mind often is the most valuable insights and that's true any workplace you go to any workplace you go to right the new person is the person that's able to point out all the flaws, right? Because old people have been so used to just doing it this way that they just keep doing it this way. The new people point out the flaws, see the different things that are possible, and start doing those things. So it's not a bad energy to be in, but you have to also embrace it. Let me get to the moth. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, the fish popped up. Let me go to the fishy first. Restless. Change of focus, lost in the current. So this is why I keep glove gloving. <laughs> the fish loves to be subsumed in life's current. Nothing pleases it more than movement, movement, and more movement. The roaming lifestyle of the fish may be exhilarating for a while, but usually leads to weariness and slippery relationships. With all the possibilities out there in the vast waters, the fish becomes lost without clear goals and intentions. Spend some time with the lunar forces the moon mm -hmm. dear fish as the peace and calm of the moon will soothe your soul so the moon controls the tide if you're a fish and you're constantly glub glubbing around apparently because we can't say swimming anymore now it's just going to be a fish that's just glub glubbing just glub glubbing glub glubbing with the glub glubbing okay 
and we're just whoop, 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 and the current is going the opposite direction and you're trying to fight it glub glubbing for your life okay it's not going to work if you work with the moon it works with the emotional so you can glub glub through your emotions real easy right because you don't want to if you as they said if you are fighting it then you're going to start hurting yourself like really like legit people like that's the people will really hurt themselves if they don't. I'm not trying to be funny about that at all. Like I'm trying to be dead ass serious with a dead ass serious face. Like please do not. Um, we do not promote self harm on this channel. I am a self harm survivor. Therefore, <laughs> I will tell you we do not do that. I've done lots of things. In the dark night of the soul. On to the eagle! <laughs> All pervading power, truth seeker, transforms karma. Now, that's what I'm talking about. The noble eagle emanates the light of the sun. This great bird is both physically and spiritually strong and represents mastery over the elements of fire and air. When the eagle appears, you'll soon be thrown into the karmic fire for the sake of your transformation. The eagle pushes us to be our best and brightest selves and stops at nothing to see us shine. Grasp the sun in your talons and hold it for and hold on for the ride. You are stronger than you think, eagle child. Now, um, some of you may or may not know. But with this season of transformation, and I was talking to my one friend about it, and she's not even a Scorpio, but I do, um, I think just with the season of transformation, it's important to understand the Scorpio symbols for transformation. Um, and Eagle is one of them. And Eagle is before the Phoenix, okay, and I can't remember, I can't remember what comes right before the Eagle. I believe it might be the Sea Serpent. It might be the Serpent that comes before the Eagle. I can really look that back up. But, um... We're kind of in this period where we're all, um, even if you're not a Scorpio, right, you're going into this ego energy because we're, everything's in the Aquarius. We're going up into the energy where we're up in the air. We're trying to have a sky's eye view. We're trying to have a bigger, um, bigger view, bigger picture, uh, higher consciousness, right? Able to see the ground down for what it is or see a situation down like for what it is and not make it into some big thing that's like bigger than us. I guess that's one I want to get to. The moth, impulsive, hasty, and wishful. So, ooh, the moth is sure the grass is greener on the other side. Moth energy is at play when we're attracted to easy solutions for, or anything shiny and new. This can lead to unfinished projects, disappointment, or burnout. It's helpful to remind moth personalities that life is complex. No matter the illusion, no one is exempt from the trials and tribulations of this great journey. Practice seeing life from an, um, an infinite mystery rather than wishing it was easier or different. So, you may be new to this channel, I don't know, because we got lots of new cards here. So we got the Earthworm, in which is like, you're new to seeing different things. So you may be new, excited, jumping all over the place, trying to see everything, right? Um, don't, just come, that, you know, whatever. Don't be so quick in haste to see and experience everything with this moss that you jump into the wrong current here with this fish if you know what i mean like because you maybe want to see everything and find everything and put all this knowledge in your brain but then you got to also think about how you feel after you put all that in your brain right are you still grounded with this earthworm because this, this earthworm is grounded and new and they're able to point out all these different little things and see all these different little things that other people um, may have gotten used to not being able to see or gotten used to this working out in a more problematic way And so if you're jumping in there too fast You're just going to just jump in and learn the problematic ways of old and not shape the um, New ways of being right. We're trying to shape the new world We're trying to shape the new world Let me get some tarot on it Let me get some tarot on it let me get some tarot, won't it? <laughs> oh, don't mind me. I'm just doing things. Okay. Get some chaotic cleanse, okay? Make you feel better. You li you, you, you liven up a little bit. Get some joy in your life. Yes, I spray all of it because I want to get the whole aura clean, okay? I want the chaos out my whole aura. I spray the whole aura. 
I don't spray the bottom part on camera, but Lord knows when it's not on camera. I'll be spraying that too. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Sad, I hope you appreciate the humor. Eight of Pentacles. Yes, so. You wake and work. Wake and work. Wake and work. So this with this earthworm energy, you may have started a new job or you may be trying to start a new project here. And it's like every day you wake up and go straight to working on that. Every day you go, you wake up and go straight to working on that. You don't pay attention to anything else. Nothing else is in your path. I don't see her. Okay. Ooh. Justice. Hermit. Tower. Four of Wands. Empress. Well, golly gee. What is this reading? Are we still talking about the same people? <laughs> I'm just playing. No. I'm just playing. All these cards are upright. This is. I think this is the first dream reading where every single card has come up upright. Yeah, I think so. Um, we have justice here. So, in your dreams here, you may be getting downloads about what to do next, how to be fair, how to be your expanded um, higher self, right? Because your higher self comes after you've dealt with your karma. You may be getting um, explanations about that. Okay. You may be getting explanations about that. Um... You may also be learning how to examine different sides of yourself, I'm getting as well. Um, if you need help with your Lilith, I do have Lilith videos on this channel. That's like your dark side, okay? Most people don't talk about that, but if you're going to balance it, you need to know about it. So, um, click, um, scroll through, go through the channel, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, which you should have already. Um, just put it out there. So, subscribe now. Okay, look at those videos. But, uh, um, don't necessarily go if you have a Sag Sun and you're watching this. Don't necessarily um, watch the Sag Lilith. Go find your Lilith in your birth chart and watch the videos for that. You can watch all of them if you really want to, like to find out about it, whatever. But um, especially the beginning ones, because the beginning ones I was just talking about, it, like the first ones in that playlist. Um, I'm going to spread those out, but take a look at that because I'm really getting that you are trying to balance your dark side here okay if you haven't already um looked at those or seen those check those out because they are really um helpful for finding out about this dark side here that you know you're trying to balance out in your dreams so that you can have a better understanding of what what in your dreams is actually going on now we have in the waking world your emotions in the hermit you're hiding from them you're hiding from your emotions you're literally putting everything into your work Wake up, work. <laughs> wake up, work. Take a break, drink. Wake up, work. Take a break, drink. <laughs> I don't know who that one was. I just start, that's really what I heard. It's like you wake up and you work, and at the end of the day, it's like, oh my God, I need like three drinks. I've been working all day. And it's like, okay, well, who told you to work all day? You told yourself to work all day. Okay. Let's start there. Okay, so don't hide your feelings or drink them away. Do not drink them away. That could also be why this fish is having a heart problem because, um, you know, alcohol, I'm not trying to um, pressure anybody here. I'm just going to just tell you the truth. God honest truth. God honest truth. Um, liquor is not, can, it's not really good for you. It messes with your emotions. Um, it's a depressant. It's a depressant. So... When you drink, especially if you drink a lot, like like a one day, whatever, a little bit a day, whatever, or a little bit like here and there, whatever is fine. But I mean, like if you're like wake up working and you have like my vodka or not like your vodka, but like um, let's say what's a what's a heavy one? Ciroc is you know. I mean, Ciroc is pretty. It's it's like partially way. I'm talking about like. You going up there and getting like the big bottle, you know what I mean? Like, like don't do that and drink that all day. Type energy, right? And I'm only saying that because I'm getting that energy from somebody. It may not be you, but it may be somebody else up there who may have that energy. So, just put it out there. Um, we have the tower for your emotions in your dreams. So, you may not be able to sleep well, which is part of the problem here as well. Um, your work. 
you get off work, you drink, you're trying to hide your feelings and so they all have to be expressed in your dreams because you won't express them during the day. So they have, you, know, you have to try and balance them out in your dreams. You won't express them during the day. So at night they come bam, 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 shocking you in your dreams. And it makes it hard for you to sleep because you're not um, expressing yourself out during the day. You're trying to hold yourself back during the day, right? And I get it. I feel like for some people, they're like, yeah, well, the drinking part will help me to not hold myself back. But it also helps, it doesn't help you clearly process the emotions either. So it's not aiding you in this particular issue. That's all I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to be, I'm just trying to, you know, help you out as best I can. Okay. Um, so if you are, yeah. I'm, I'm getting a vision. <laughs> Sorry. I really feel like raving when I say that. But it's like I'm getting a, real, a vision of you walking around in your dreams. It's dark. It's a dark dream. Then you walk into like a classroom. Okay. And you are like sitting there with your notebook and just like studying like, you know, whatever. Writing in the, like in the classroom or whatever. And then someone like throws something at you and you're like, shut the fuck up. Like, you know, it's like a, it's like a whole like high school like thing or whatever I don't really know what this if this is like a nightmare for you it's like you're running out with like all your stuff and you got the big glasses on you're like oh they called me a dweeb like you know, it's like that type of thing I don't know what like what, this is like your actual dream or not but that's really what I'm like picking up these cards is really what I'm it's like instead of you like like really like crying about that type of thing you're just like they called me a dweeb Fuck those fuckers, you know? And then you're like, grrr, and then you kind of like suppress, right? And that's the part they want to get you to not do. Do not suppress. Release. See, there's a big difference between if you suppress and if you release. If you release, everything is lighter, happier. You start feeling, especially like in your, in your heart chakra. Because they, because the suppression, um, turns it down. The suppression is you like numbing the top half of your chakras and also invalidating your um, root chakra, the sense of who you are. Which, when you do that as well, that also lets you um, be more susceptible to narcissistic and, and like toxic people because they attack your emotional center which is your sacral right above the root right which is where that fish would live right so you may be running back and forth between all these different things because you're like invalidating yourself and you're misaligning yourself because you're not honoring your all of your emotions at once so they're coming out at night and at night you try and realign and then when you wake up you start working and doing all this little stuff and start suppressing and, and start misaligning yourself right back so you're in a constant battle between yourself here so the good news is is that your foundation is healing with the four of swords here so that's your foundation that's whenever you get you get bruised you go back to healing okay or at least thinking about healing with this four of swords it's like you recognize it and you acknowledge it, but then you don't do anything about it. Mm. Okay. So you recognize and acknowledge it, but you don't do anything about it. And that's kind of the problem. Is that you kind of leave it to your dream self or to your higher self to work out all the things that you don't want to face in the um, 3D out here. So what's the next one? What's the problem? So for the um, the lesson here is the Empress, right? Um, now the Empress is Venus. This is the love card. This ra this is um, the Empress radiates love and beauty. And if you ever seen Sailor Moon, watch Sailor V. Okay, Sailor Venus. What would she say? Uh, In the name of Venus, I shall. Find but she's like she's like the the planet of love and harmony or it's something like that. I don't, I don't remember what she says exactly because I pay attention mostly to Sailor Moon and Sailor Saturn because they're my favorites. Even though I feel like Sailor Saturn and Sailor Pluto should have been switched depending on how their planets go. But that's a whole other story for one day. We'll get into that later. Okay? Empress. Where you radiate love. You're trying to get to a point where you just... You, you express your emotions freely, openly, caringly, 
and unapologetically. And we have the Two of Swords for your blockage because you don't even, you may not even see the damage that you do to yourself because you're so used to not feeling with this hermit. You're used to not, you're used to not feeling. You're used to walking around everyday life not feeling. You're used to walking around everyday life holding the torch, for, you know, like holding yourself back, holding this torch up, like keeping it like hidden within. You're used to that all the time. So for you, see how the sun is in here and it's kind of a black sun. You block out the sun in your life. You block out the joy in your life because you won't. If you if it's not joy, you don't want to experience it. But in order to experience joy, you have to experience the things that are not joy. Something dark, something scary, something... Which is why I said the shadow side. So, um, again, if you are someone who has been integrating that and working on that, this is, you know, not saying anything wrong. Just keep doing what you're doing. You know, maybe be a little bit more expressive to the people in your day-to-day -day life. But... If you have not done that at all, which I'm really catching, this is a reading for a lot of people who have not um, really started that particular type of process. They're new to that process, right? With this earthworm, they're new to working, like to working on self. the The biggest joy I can tell you is that if you work on yourself, you get rewarded in ways that you don't even realize. A lot of people we're so focused on. Um, like money and things like that, you don't realize there's there's a spiritual abundance. I had to come to terms with that. You know, like we talk about abundance all the time. There's spiritual abundance. There's, you know, the Empress is not broke, but the Empress is not focused on money. The Empress is focused on energy and love and putting out that loving energy. We have the warrior and the hunter. Ooh, interesting. So both very, um, fighty cards. And my throat, you may have a throat chakra thing from not expressing yourself because my throat is starting to, I don't know if y'all can hear it in my voice, but. <coughs> mm -hmm. <sighs> Clear that out. Yes. <laughs> it's like that, y'all. It's like that, y'all. It's like that, y'all. It's like that, like y'all. Okay, Mariah. The riddle, the creator, and what's this one over here? And the thread. Okay. Now, I do read the book for these, and then we close off the reading. So, if you made it this far, subscribe. And if you have not, well, I guess, why the hell am I talking to you? So, <laughs> I mean, if you're gone, why am I talking to you? <laughs> Obviously, you must still be here if you're hearing me. So, if you're still here, hello. Uh, 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 oh, yeah, still here. Not going nowhere? Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I heard that over there. I heard something. Oh, I'm not going anywhere. Oh, you're not going anywhere? Mm -hmm. Interesting. We have the thread, the path, the vein, the circuit. Life is a tangle. So much happens simultaneously and circuitously, leaving us grappling for meaning and direction in a network of distractions. When we connect to the energy of the thread, we strike the deepest vein in the body. Our whole being responds to this tug, meaning is pumped through our bloodstream. Our mind and spirits are lifted. We remember who we are and what we came in this world to do. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's what this Lilith is. That's why I've mentioned that so deep. Because the Lilith is um, your id in um, psychology. would be like your id, right? Um, that would be like your instinctual, like what you came in this world to do. Like that contains like the, the plans for you in there as well. And you, like, whatever your soul is desiring for you to do is because that desire was placed upon you before you got here. Does that make any sense? Like, you, um, you yearn to do certain things because you were placed with that desire before you came to this earthly realm as a little baby. And it's our, it's our, well, it's our parents' job to also, like, to 
recognize that dream and foster that dream but after they're gone is is our um responsibility to really like find out what that was especially if you weren't allowed to um do those things when you were younger if your parents were not supportive of you i can relate if your parents did not believe in you i can relate if they were just trying to criticize and hurt you and harm you I can relate, so <laughs> that's why I'm like, this is for everybody, you know, if you got the North Node too, because this is, I can relate, okay, <laughs> we got the riddle, the puzzle, the question, the mystery, when the riddle is present, we must stop searching for the right answer, it can't be found, ultimately it's not important, rather there must be a shift from the literal to the metaphorical, from logic to mythic, you are thinking too small and literally about the situation, the riddle card appears when the energy is deep and mysterious, like the elusive wisdom of Zen Koon. Focusing harder on it won't do it. Neither will increased effort. Okay? Time, surrender, and humor are your only allies. What feels like the most pressing dilemma won't reveal its deeper wisdom for a long time. Eventually, you'll learn a profound lesson from the riddle. But now get comfortable with the limitations of your intellect and the reality of not knowing. It may in fact be the only reality that there is, you know? So that's what I'm saying. Like with this fish, this is, this is going with the flow, right? These two together. Because this is basically saying that if you stop trying to control everything and just let something flow out of you, like, they, I don't know if you feel the difference. But I think there's like a certain point where you can feel the difference. Okay, you can feel when you are getting guided to do something and whether you are trying to force something or if you're working with spirit for something. Like you can tell if you're working with, against, or with spirit, against spirit, or without spirit, I guess I should say. You can kind of feel the difference. If you can't, um, I can help you with that. Get a shadow healing session. We'll talk about all that stuff. I'll explain to you what I know about you know, this this journey going on so far because I've been trying to lean into it very deeply. Swipe out that root chakra. <laughs> trying to go into it very, very deeply. Just let it wash away. Hey, the tingles on your feet. Okay. The creator, the artist, the alchemist, the innovator. Come on with the shadow healing, shadow healing session. Oh. The creator, the first archetype in the trio of, of existence, is not intimidated by darkness or by lack. They know that from the void, creation inevitably emerges. With meager, minimal, and outlandish materials, the creator reveals a new image. They make the empty room resonate with healing sounds. Oh, this is interesting. So, um, a Scorpio reading I had, if you want to know about more about the empty room, I did have a Scorpio dream reading a couple of days ago that talked about the empty room a lot. So, if this um, makes you... This, the creator is what adds to the empty room, okay? They generate bounty from the seed that others toss away. And the seed card came in that reading, too. Wow. Okay. So generative... Uh, no, though generative, this archetype annihilates preconceived notions of what is possible, leaving unexpected openings in the wake of its destruction. This, the creator does this first by being absolutely present to what is, not imagining or wishing things were different, but owning what they are currently at this moment. Second, trusting that a force greater than themselves awaits constant collaboration with each human soul. Whether we call it nature, God, goddess, Reiki, any of those things, spirit, ancestors, whoever you want to call upon. You know, whatever. Just understand it's something higher than yourself. That's actually doing something, not just something that you... You know, we're we're in the we're in the time, we're in the spirit, we're in the energy where, the you know the things you actually call upon actually show up spiritually. So, watch what you calling upon, because if you calling upon some demons, uh, and them demons show up, do not be upset with anybody else. If you trying to summon a demon and you summon one for yourself, I'm just gonna say it. I'm just gonna say it. We have the warrior here, the samurai, the soldier, the advocate. We often envision the warrior as an armed figure with sword in hand, moving blindly toward battle. Yet the deeper aspects of this archetype bring us face to face with death itself. 
The warrior stands precariously at the edge of life and death, trusting the external to guide the sword's blade. The warrior's work requires presence, alignment, and purpose. If and when the warrior loses its center, meaningless confrontations and violence are the default response. When this card appears, it is important to question the battle at hand. It is likely a great one, with deep roots and long-standing tensions. The action you take will stay with you long after the dust settles. So choose wisely, brave one. As you draw your sword, realign with the external wisdom within, then surrender to battle. So this, to me, is about picking your battles in this context, right? Because right now you're picking, the battle you're picking is work and not yourself. Because you need to, um, if you're like on the, like this is, so like if you're on like the brink of death, this is the archetype. This is the archetype you embody to come back. People who are in comas, who come out of comas, this is the archetype to come back. People who um, have accidents or um, get into crashes and things, this is the energy that will have you come back, right? This warrior energy, this knowing that your purpose is not over, knowing you still have things to do, knowing you still... This is, and see, this ring is spiritual. It's a spiritual ring right here. Over the third eye of the skull, it's like you, you you work with these things, right? Especially if you're on this channel. If you're on this channel, we're assassins here. I don't know if you got told. Um, when you subscribe, you join the assassination. You become we're, we're trying to transform you to an assassin. Okay, you just slice off enemies and we keep it moving. Okay, we don't deal with the bull shit. We have the hunter, the seeker, the pursuer, and the predator. The hunter hunts, duh. Um, they, are on they are on a precise mission with an aim. To return home empty-handed would be to fail, which is not an option in the hunter's eye. Mm. This archetype would journey far and wide, seeking the prize that calls to its heart or stomach. Like I said, that's sacral, what you feel you need to do. Or um, even if it's not the sacral, even above is the solar plexus, which is like your confidence and stuff like that too. Um... Tales of bravery and feats of strength often result creating a life full of adventure. The hunter, is, the hunter is skillful, quick, decisive, and results-oriented. Like the great hunting goddess Artemis, who carries her quiver upon her back, the hunter typically has a weapon of choice. When this card appears, it is critical that you ask three questions. What am I hunting? Why am I hunting it? And is the weapon I hold so tightly in my grip, truly needed for the task at hand. And I will also ask another question is, are you hunting down something that is worth your time? Because you can know why you're hunting it, what you're hunting, and if you're using the right thing to do it. But is it worth your time to do it is the question. Okay. I think that's it. I'm gonna spray some more. This is my new one. I did. Like, I don't like the label on this one. Oh, a chaotic cleanse. Yes, I, I, I need to go put some more in here. I, I, I use it frequently. It's actually very, very helpful. It cleanses out your aura. Okay. Link is in the description below for that, along with my bath box and other various things I have to really do spiritual cleansing. I think this has been like the last two months I've really seen a lot of people need some spiritual cleansing. So we're just like the focus. Spiritual cleansing. Cleanse it out. Heal it up. Cleanse it out. Heal it up. Cleanse it out. Heal it up. Get some candles too. So this does come, the bath box does come with a candle in it. But there are some um, sets that have additional candles. So if you want to you know, exercise the entire aura while you're doing it. I just start with the root, you know. I mean, hey, if you want extra, you got to get extra, so just saying. I do want to thank you all for watching. Thank you all for commenting. I've been loving these comments. I don't know, like, if you, like, I don't know. I just, I either get, like, the best ones, like, make me want to cry, because they're just so sweet and appreciative. Or I get the ones I'm just like, oh my god, like we really like are like 
friends or whatever because they're so like nice and kind and thoughtful and like i just appreciate them i appreciate all the likes i've been getting please keep liking the videos please keep sharing these videos please keep um subscribing to the channel okay share these especially these dream i feel like these dream readings are really really helpful so share them out um the last one i did i think for sagittarius was um help i can't remember what that one was i know the one before that was uh, very very fear based so um yeah just share these check them out and we'll see you later bye